I remember a long silence, followed by my brother's hesitant voice. I remember taking over when he couldn't go on. I remember Mom breaking into tears and holding me. I remember her trying to stop my stepdad from calling my dad. I also remember the words sexual and abuse together for the first time. I have told this story before. I told it to a detective. I told it to close friends when talking about hardships. And I've even told it to complete strangers. Everyone reacts differently when they hear it, but one thing they all share, and one thing that never fails to make me cringe inside, is that look of pity. See, at first, I used to take refuge in that look. I'd use the story to make people understand me more and that I had suffered. But as time went on, I noticed my motives for telling the story had changed. I wanted people to give me attention, to show that I was the greatest victim of all. And it started to haunt me. You see, once you relate to people that you're a victim, they will look at you a little differently. But it's when you wear it on your sleeve that it never quite goes away. This one, however, was my little secret till senior year of high school. Bisexual. There was a girl in one of my classes who sat next to me. She was beautiful. She had long blonde hair, blue eyes, pale skin, you know, all the features you'd think a pretty girl would have. I mean, she'd walk into class, she'd have her hair curled down to here, short flower skirt, spandex pants, perfect makeup, every detail went perfectly together. But I think it was her smile that got me the most. Or the spandex pants. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was her smile, which was what really tied the whole thing together. And when she looked at me with that smile, no. I felt warm. Like all the simple joys of life were just right there in my reach. And all this joy in fifth period Catholic ethics. How's that for irony? <laughs> <laughs> I used to keep a journal under my bed, and sometimes before going to sleep, I'd take it out and write some poems for her about her beauty, her smile, anything. It's a little strange, because when I liked guys, I never got this sentimental. I just try to hang out with them, talk to them, basically be around them as much as possible. But when it was a girl, I, I'd barely be out going out to have a conversation with them. <laughs> Having feelings for a girl was something very private for me. It was an artistic admiration almost. I mean, when I'd write my journal, I saw myself as William Blake or John Keats or any of the romantic poets writing about them. And it was the most natural feeling that I had ever had for another person. But I always knew in the back of my head, and this is the main reason why I kept my feelings to myself, is that if I were to tell any of the girls I liked or any of my friends about how I felt, I wouldn't be perceived as a man, as natural, as anything. I can remember even as a kid, when I picture myself in my mind's eye, more often than not, I would see a guy. And I found as I grew older that I identified with guys much more than I did with girls. I never gave up a shot though, because, I mean, I knew I was a girl and I was comfortable with that. But it wasn't until I started figuring out my sexuality that this mindset started to surface. And this feeling was not limited to when I was around girls that liked. I had a lot of guy friends in high school. And I noticed that whenever we'd hang out, I never saw myself as a woman. The idea would just be completely foreign to me. And for the most part, it was alright. It was only when people decided to give me reality checks that I got frustrated, and I was reminded of how the world saw me. I remember how I started to hate my body. I hated I hated how it wasn't muscular, how my hands weren't bigger, how my voice wasn't deeper. And those were just the little things, the things I thought about when I was alone. The worst part 
was having that mental image of myself and trying to be that person on the outside and then having it bulldozed over, even by friends. I can remember every time someone would say to me, why do you wear boxers? Or why do you hang out with guys? You're not a guy. Or you hit like a girl. What's the matter? Does your hand hurt? I was just screaming in my head, you know what? Screw you. What gives you the right to say what I can or can't do or be? Mm. I wanted to shout that gender identity has nothing to do with what's out here. It's what's in here and in here. Yes. It's a lifestyle. It's a mentality. It's who you really are on the inside. But I did not say any of this. Kept my mouth shut, closed my eyes, and looked the other way. Eventually, though, it got to the point where I had to stop walking away and tell somebody, so I told one of my friends, and she was completely understanding. And a few hours later, we went to the Gap to look for some more masculine clothes. And we're in the guys' section, and I remember just glancing over at the women's section, and I thought to myself, that's what I want to wear. <laughs> it confused me to no end because my body was sending me mixed signals, and I didn't know what to do. So I kept a mental track of when I felt like a guy or a girl, and I ultimately came to the conclusion that my mind my mental perception of myself just couldn't be defined as one gender. It was kind of a bittersweet realization because while I now knew what was going on with me, there was that part of me that wanted a definite answer as to what I was. It's a challenge trying to figure out how to live your life day to day knowing that you don't fit into a category. And it's still a challenge. Over the years, I thought about how these words have shaped me. What effect have they had on me as well as the people around me? And I've ultimately decided that while these words do describe me, they don't define me. At our core, I guess we're all undefinable. Brown, because we're always changing and we're always learning. Evolving. But we all have strengths. As I know. We all have labels that we put on ourselves. Seven. Or people put on us. Black. And we also have things about ourselves that we're not proud of. White. Or we're ashamed of. Bitch. They're our words. Jewish. And I think the hardest part of life is owning your words. Bisexual. You do not own them when you cover them up. Animal. Owning is when you can face your faults, your actions, woman, your identity, your talents, queer, yet still love the person you see in the mirror. No one has said it's easy, but no one has ever said that it's not worth it. Mm -hmm.